The Goat House is back with my locks of NFL Week 3 going over my best spread picks, upsets, parlay options, anytime touchdowns, over-unders, and plenty more. Let's go ahead and take a look at my picks for Week 3. Starting with my spread lock of Week 3, I'm going to go with the 49ers. Minus 7 versus the Rams, and my extra pick is going to be the Eagles plus 3 against the Saints. With that lock is the Niners. If you wanted a spread pick for every single NFL game this week, check out that recent video. The thumbnail looks like that. We have it up every week. But taking the Niners as my lock, it could scare some because all the teams that were favored by a bit last week – did not cover, it felt like. Some of them lost. But every week as the year starts, it starts to make a little more sense. Starts to even out. Less crazy things happen. There'll still be some upsets and crazy things this week. But the Niners, typically very good to start the season. They're like the most dominant team in week one against a good Jets team. They did, Purdy just has an issue against the Vikings. So I'm very confident with them this week. I'd be very confident with them possibly even covering that spread if the Rams were healthy. The Rams are completely depleted. Multiple offensive linemen, both their star receivers. I mean, their best receiver is going to be Demarcus Robinson. A uh, Safety's out, a corner's out. So the Niners are going to take care of business. Jordan Mason will run well. Brock Purdy will step it up after an off game last week and play very well. Niners are going to shellack them. They're going to win big. And then the extra pick, not a lock, but a bonus pick that I do like is the Eagles plus three. I have them beating the Saints. Most people have the Saints winning, which is very realistic, but the Eagles are really good at keeping games close they're really good at pounding the football you know keeping drives going rolling the clock so if they do lose I see it being within three but the Saints haven't seen their run game yet typically man coverage defenses like the Saints struggle against running quarterbacks and you have one of the best in football in Jalen Hurts the problem is AJ Brown is out but I think that Eagles are going to do what they do win the time possession keep the game close like they want have a chance at the end of the game if they need it if not if they don't have a chance, I'd imagine they'd be up. So those would be my my favorite spread picks. Almost put the Jags on here, feeling the Jags this week. But there is a scenario where they could get their ass kicked. Uh, but they could be a little sneaky this week. So I didn't feel super confident to put it up there. But they could, again, they could be a little sneaky. Alternate spreads. So these are for a parlay. If you any of these catch your eye, you throw them in a parlay together or with something else that you like. I'll take the Bucks on an alternate spread. And I made a rule for myself. I cannot use the team's that I picked on the spread lock. So I would love to put the Niners up here, adjust and you can do that. It kind of goes without saying because I had them as a minus seven lock. Uh, but if you want to adjust that line and throw it in a parlay or go money line, it makes sense. But the Buccaneers should cover if you drop that down to two against the Broncos. Just have them outmatched. They should be able to run or pass on them. No problem. They've been playing pretty solid defense as well, even though they're beat up. Chargers plus six. That game, I have them winning. That game against the Steelers is a flip of a coin, though. But you know that's going to be a tight battle. One, two, three point victory with you know, for whoever wins that. Uh, Seattle should handle business against the Dolphins since Skylar Thompson's in. It could be a little sneaky. could be very, very close. So I don't love the Seahawks enough. Minus four to put them as a lock, but uh, they should cover that one. And the Jags, I think, would cover if you bump that. They're, they're five and a half up a little bit. I think they should cover that. They can keep that game close. So these are more uh, if you want alternate lines for parlay options. I'm more of a fan of... If you're going to do a parlay, go uh, go money line, like Niners money line. We'll talk about that a little more in this video. Buccaneers money line, um, you know, if you're going if you're going with parlay. But some alternate spreads that, that I thought really stood out here if you're looking for parlay options. And my straight up lock is obviously going to be the Niners. I love them minus seven, so I definitely love them to win. There's been some wild upsets this year, but I do not see this one happening. If you want to see straight up picks for every week three game with not just myself, but two other guys, this video right here, it's my favorite video of the week. You can check that out. It goes up every Tuesday night. Make sure to turn notifications on so you don't miss all that stuff, any of that stuff. But Niners, I talked about it already. They're going to handle business. They're one of the better teams in football right now. People don't really see that because they just lost to the Vikings. Just a bad match up there. They're going to dominate this, this depleted Rams team. Uh, I'm not worried about them missing some guys. It's the team that is most likely to overcome some injuries. Jordan Mason's going to have a big game. I like the Bucs to take care of business against the Broncos. It could be a little scary because 0-2 teams typically are good. Covering the spread is what it is in week three. So the Broncos could be a little sneaky. I just don't see them winning the game. Uh, the Buccaneers, I think, could win with the run or the pass. Bo Nix cannot do enough, even though that's probably he's probably going to have his best game as a rookie yet. It's just not going to be by much. 
Bucks should win. And the Bengals, I thought about this one could be a little scary because the Bengals start season slow, but they already got that out of the way. They played the Chiefs well last week. They're home on prime time against the Commanders. They're beat up on the interior defense line, and the Commanders could run the ball well, so the Commanders could do some damage there. I just do not see the Commanders defense, man coverage defense, dealing with Joe Burrow, Jamar Chase. I think Chase goes off. So the Bengals, the both those teams, Bengals, Commanders, they have to get a lead early, a multi-score lead early, but if the Bengals get a 10 nothing lead, the game is over. They're going to win big. Um, you know, So they're not going to allow a comeback in this game. They can take away a run from the Commanders from that, but the Commanders could run decently in this game but the Bengals this is their breakout game at home on Monday Night Football so I'll take them um, as not my lock but my extra picks here that I feel good about the one at the top for the all these is my actual lock so the Niners I have handling business in two categories here and my favorite upset pick so some options as a single money line bet here I'm gonna go with the Bears the Colts are favorite I was a little surprised about that so that makes it a little scary if Vegas knows Vegas knows something but I'm, I'm a matchup guy I break it down by the matchup the Colts are really struggling to stop the run the Bears are struggling to run the ball but the Colts being so bad stopping the run right now and the Forrest Buckner's out the Bears will be able to run the ball with DeAndre Swift with Khalil Herbert if they want to give the ball Roshan Johnson I think he can do some damage Damage, but Swift should have a big game uh, here against the Colts. And then you look at the other side of the ball. Yeah, Richardson can, and Jonathan Taylor can make plays sometimes, but the Bears look like they have one of the better defenses in football. They can create a turnover. They've been locked down as well. So the matchup to me very obviously says the Bears will win this game. It doesn't always work like that, especially early in the season, but I'm going to roll with it. I think Chicago finds a way uh, to win here. I think Buckner being out is huge. I took the Chargers over the Steelers, of course. If Herbert is some for some reason out, I think there's a chance that he's out, but I'm not counting on it if he's out I'm going to take the Steelers but yeah it's going to be a battle it's going to stay close I'm going to trust Harbaugh to get it done just with the better quarterback Herbert versus Justin Fields uh, the Chargers pass rush is something that the Steelers haven't seen yet either but the Steelers could win with the ground and then with TJ Watt just getting after Justin Herbert who's a little beat up but I like the Chargers the better quarterback finds a way Justin Fields is bound to anytime now kind of blow a game or you know take it away from the team like he did in Chicago Hasn't done yet that yet for Pittsburgh. They're doing a good job with them. And I did pick the Eagles, but that is a 50-50 one. My reasoning was I do think the Eagles are just a better team, uh, even though it doesn't look like it. But the weeks one and two could be a mirage. But a big reason is well, a couple reasons. The, the Saints have not seen the Eagles run game yet. They played the Panthers and the Cowboys, very bad run games. They're relying on getting a big lead early in this game. So the Eagles... Will pound the football. They'll have success. They'll control the clock, win the time of possession, so they should win. And then Jalen Hurts should run well. Saints are very good at man coverage, but man coverage is tough with really good running quarterbacks. So uh, tough part is A.J. Brown being out, but I do like Hurts in the Eagles to take care of business, but a 50-50 game for sure. It is tough putting money against the Saints right now because they look really good. But those are my favorite upset picks. Uh, keeping an eye on the Packers Titans line if love plays the Packers are underdogs right now it's going to switch really quickly if he does play though so uh, usually Vegas knows they're keeping the Titans as favorites so that whole situation is interesting so that's a kind of a game to monitor there uh, and you know if you want to take a flyer, put a couple bucks on, on the Packers right now, hoping that love plays, that makes sense as well. Low risk, high reward, I suppose. Best picks and some over-unders. Uh, last week was weird. Not the best week in terms of picks, but over-unders worked out pretty well. Again, as the season kind of clicks in the gear and then it goes by matchup and the better teams winning most of the time, it starts to become a lot easier to make these bets. Uh, but yeah, so over-unders up here. Best picks, just my favorite single picks. You know, uh, we talked about the Niners minus seven. Basically, my favorite picks in this video. And then taking a couple upsets wouldn't be bad. But parlay options, the Niners are going to win that game straight up. The Buccaneers straight up. The Bengals should win straight up. The Chargers on the mul uh, the alternate line because I think they win the game. But And that's only if Herbert plays. I think they win the game. But if they do lose, they're not going to lose by more than six. And Seattle should handle business against Skylar Thompson and the Dolphins. I like these over-unders. Uh, the Ravens and Cowboys should be a shootout. This should be one of those games where the Ravens put up an insane amount of points over 48 and a half charger Steelers is going to be a Harbaugh versus Tomlin game two top defenses not a lot of explosion on that offense besides some plays here and there it should stay under 36 especially if Herbert is out I don't think he'll be out but uh, even if he plays I think he'll be under it's gonna be a defensive game Miami and Seattle is a sneaky one I think he, most people would think Skylar Thompson's playing so there's no way it goes over but it's a low total right there 41 and a half uh, Miami should be able to run the ball pretty well 
and they still, you know, Thompson still has some weapons that, that can make big time plays. And I do think Seattle could score a bunch of points. They're getting good against or through the air, but they should be able to run the ball against the Dolphins as well. I had a 27 20 final, so that kind of crushes that over under. And if Love is out, I'm definitely taking the under. It's probably my favorite one of the week. If Love is out, Green Bay, Tennessee under 37 and a half. Uh, before Love practice, it was at 37, so it hasn't changed much there. But Titans defense is really good. You wouldn't know it by the 0-2 record. They're one of the best in football. Uh, they're not going to let Malik Willis do that much damage. They're not going to let Josh Jacobs do as much damage as he did to the Colts. Um, and the Titans themselves, I don't know if they score a ton of points there, so that definitely should crush the under on 37.5 if Love is out. I think it probably still goes under if you play, but it's gonna. I wouldn't bet it. It's gonna be very close. I think I have a one point difference uh, if 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 he does play there. But yeah, Tennessee has a good defense there. But those are my favorite picks this week that really stand out. And now to my favorite part: anytime touchdowns. Love those. Been doing pretty good on them this year. Um, and I have some of my favorite bets listed up here. I love just. A flyer, a couple bucks if you want. Jordan Mason to score two touchdowns against the Rams is plus 300. That doesn't feel fair. I really think he's scoring two touchdowns. Uh, no Debo to take carries or receptions. It, you know, Mason, and they have Ayuk, and they have Kittle, but Rams look pretty weak against the run, and they're just, just beat up everywhere. Not going to put too much on Purdy. Whenever they're in the red zone, whenever they're by the goal line, Jordan Mason's going to score, and, and he could rip off some runs as well. He ran tough against the Vikings, even though even though they lost that game. Um, Jamar Chase has positive odds. I love that. Man coverage, weak man coverage of the, sec- of the secondary of the commanders. Breakout game for Chase. He's going to score. And then uh, if you want to pair some together, kind of play it safe, Mason and ETN, one touchdown each is positive odds. Just from a two-touchdown parlay, a lot of time you got to pair three together. So I love that. But a ranking, my favorites over here. Uh, Mason, we talked about, love it. I think he scores multiple times. Going to be surprised if he doesn't. If he doesn't score at all, I'm gonna I'm gonna cry because I it doesn't make no sense to me. He's I, I'm I really think he's gonna score twice. Um, Etn's gonna score against the Bills. Bills are missing their two starting linebackers. They're they're good against the pass right now. They're not good against the run. For the Jags to have a chance, you got to pound Etn. I love the matchup for Chase. Finally getting going, having a breakout game against a weak secondary that runs man coverage. He feasts on that man coverage. Uh, Alvin Kamara has been a touchdown machine. He could score on the ground or through the air. Derrick Henry should score in the Cowboys weak run defense. Um, Lamar might score multiple. That's why it's a little, you know, do they both score? Do they just one score multiple times? So maybe that kind of brings it down the list, but I still love it. Jameer Gibbs and maybe Montgomery uh, score uh, against the Cardinals. I like Gibbs a little bit more because he could score through the air or on the ground, but if they're on the goal line, Montgomery's probably the guy. I'll go DeAndre Swift, and he is a uh, he, he's a positive odds guy here this week, uh, w- which makes it a decent single bet. He hasn't been good. The Bears' run blocking hasn't been good, but the Colts' run defense is awful, and they're without DeForest Buckner. The Bears, for them to have a shot to win, they got to run, 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 not not throw, throw, throw. So, uh, so I like Swift. I like Lamar scoring on top of Henry. The Cowboys are going to have their hands full stopping a run. Rasheed Rice going to score multiple injuries for the Chiefs. I think he'll be a problem specifically after the catch. We saw him go on a, on a go ball down the sideline and score. He can do that. But after the catch, he's going to be a problem for the Falcons. I think Mahomes has a really good game because he's very good, but he plays very well through the air indoors. It's in Atlanta uh, in that Dome Stadium. And then Jalen Hurts scored last week. You have the options on the tush push. We have a, a good option on a breakthrough run against the Saints man coverage defense with the defenders turned around they're going to send guys deep he's going to run so that's another good option as well and there's more that I like but those are the 10 that really stand out uh these have been my favorite bets this year the anytime touchdowns my favorite bet even if it loses the George Mason two two touchdown I love that bet that's a lot of fun don't put an insane amount of money on it uh even though I do think it's happening uh it just seems like a really solid this this is the type those are the types of bet you throw some change on uh, and it's just a lot of fun, you know, watching that. He's going to score at least one time this week. I mean, it's going to be mind-blowing, mind-boggling if he doesn't. But uh, those are my favorite picks. Love me some anytime touchdowns. We're always tweeting out props. We've been on fire with, if you follow us on Twitter, with our prime time picks, you know, with props, uh, anytime touchdowns. We were 7-for-7 seven seven on that Eagles-Falcons game. So, 
follow us on Twitter. We'll talk about the Thursday night game tonight between the Jets and the Patriots. There's not a long list of things I love for that game or of a defensive game, maybe some field goals, uh, but uh, cooking something up for that. So check it out. Check out our other videos, and we'll have uh, you know, week three is about to start, so we'll have those recap winners and losers grades video co- covering week three, and then we get into week four. So join us for all that. Be much appreciated. Important links pinned in the comments. That is going to do it for this one. Thanks for watching. Goodbye.